Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday. It is the Earth Master out here. 11.32 a.m. California time. 11.12. 2024 is the date. Uh, looks like a 1.9 up into the area of Montana. The latest quake there on the globe. Let's see where that earthquake is coming in at. Uh, just outside of Helena, it looks like, to the south. Um, nothing big, just a little two-pointer out there in the last hour. Also, uh, see a little bit of earthquake activity showing up on the seismograph stations here around China Lake and also Petrolia, picking up a couple smaller earthquakes there on the map. Uh, nothing showing up yet, though, from the USGS in terms of that uh, small earthquake activity. Uh, as far as overnight activity goes, well, not a whole lot. Uh, mostly smaller microquake activity out here around the Northern California, also down in Southern California area as well. I'm not really seeing any unusual movement, no major swarming going on, no, uh, like I say, no unusual activity, just a little quiet period across California for now. A handful of earthquakes out there in Nevada, uh, even so that's from yesterday, one from today, but all below the 2.5 threshold. Uh, Texas oil fields still getting hit, also the New Madrid Seismic Zone had another little earthquake this morning, a little 2.0 near Tiptonville, Tennessee. This is just the latest in the series of earthquakes out here across the New Madrid seismic zone that uh, had a 3.7 earthquake here earlier this month. For, for now, though, nothing uh, big going on out there. Just some periodic smaller quakes across the globe here in terms of larger scale potential. Let's see what we got out here, or larger movement, I should say. Looks like it's going to be this 5.5 in the Atlantic Ocean where it's been awfully quiet here recently. Looks like things are starting to stir back up out here across the mid-Atlantic Ridge. Yeah, maybe just north there, it looks like. Beautiful, great oceanic ridge zone out there. Uh, aside from that, uh, goodness, it almost looks as similar to yesterday here in terms of the lack of activity. Not a whole lot of uh, sufficient movement here overnight. I guess we'll see what happens throughout the remainder of the day today. Um, see here, around Papua New Guinea area, looks like a little bit of movement early this morning 5.3 aside from that uh, not a whole lot of newer activity back over here across the plate boundary uh, one three-pointer it looks like there off the north island coast that's fairly new in the white circle on the globe here the red rings indicating older earthquake activity uh, fairly deep quake there in the in the Aleutian trench let's see where that's at right here 67 miles deep here into the subduction zone of the uh, Pacific Plate to the south and the North American Plate here to the north. Um, yeah, they're show, USGS showing that as a 3.9. EMSC reporting that as a 4.2. Take your pick. Uh, aside from that, uh, not a whole lot going on out here in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, for volcano activity, see what we got here across the board. I know there's always... Volcanoes stirring up out there across the uh, uh, volcano. What happened to my link here? There we go. This is actually a really cool site that, uh, well, you can find out a whole bunch of information on earthquakes, uh, volcanoes. It's got a really cool um, history of certain volcanoes out here far as anything major going on i mean look at the current erupting volcanoes across the globe um quite a few of them but that's very common that happens on any given year nothing of abnormal activity nothing going on here across the west coast indonesia islands area always a hot spot there around the java trench the kamchatka area and um but aside from that there's really nothing major uh no unusual activity across those volcanoes for now uh, for the Iceland activity, let's see what we got here for Iceland news. We should be getting close here to uh, seeing an eruption at any point now. It's been about a month or so, or probably longer since we've seen the last eruption out there across the, uh, uh, the volcano there in Iceland. Uh, this update here was put out uh, today. Seismic activity in the crater area remains rather low. Uh, land rise and magma accumulation under the Savartsingi continues. 
And based on the rate of magma accumulation and the volume that has accumulated, it will be considered unlikely that it will erupt in November. So looks like things are slowing down a little bit. Let's see what we got here for um, our measurements here. That's UWE. Man, I got so many links here. It's unreal. I need to organize these, I think. There's the Savart Singhi um, inflation, deflation map. Well, it's still going up rather steadily here, but they feel that uh, an eruption will not happen here in November. But uh, it's been going up and up and up here across the Savart Singhi area. Uh, from what I can see here, we could be could be getting close uh, to another eruption. But, uh, I mean, look at that. September all the way northward here. We're all the way here right on the chart indicating inflation. So we're, uh, we're definitely up there. I guess we'll just see what happens here for uh, uh, the time being. Again, no major earthquake activity out here for now. The Alaska area, fairly minimal. One earthquake here just prior to the subduction zone. A little suspicious there, but we haven't seen anything uh, in this area overnight uh, following that little event. A lot of times I like to look for these little clues. Uh, these little quakes here tend to pop before a bigger earthquake strikes along the subduction zone, but uh, nothing showing up there for now. Space weather activity. Still got a little crackle crackle in my voice. It's it's getting better, folks. Slow, slowly. X flare remains. Uh, looks like a 25% chance here still today. Uh, M flare at 65. C flare around 99% chance or so. Let's see what's going on here with these sunspots. I really don't see an X flare potential. In fact, I told you guys that last night. Uh, this whole sunspot region here is decaying and basically dwindling away, fading off into the sunset, so to speak. Uh, even though it is center disk, um, it's, there's not a whole lot of complexity here with that sunspot area anymore. Uh, so that X flare is probably a little bit overrated. Uh, overnight, uh, we've seen just a little bit of C flare activity as expected here. Um, really our last decent sized events were a number of days ago when that same sunspot was more complex popping off M flares left and right. But now things have calmed down. And uh, I really don't think we're going to see anything further from that sunspot unless it decides to really amplify. But uh, it's looking pretty um, stable for now. No major roars in the forecast here, folks. As you can see, green across the board means not a whole lot of roars. All right, severe weather out here today. Not a whole lot of severe weather potential. Looks like a marginal risk uh, out across the area of the panhandle of uh, Texas there in Oklahoma. Let's see why. What do we got here? Maybe a little 2% chance here for some uh, tornado activity. Just a little slight risk here uh, around Plainview, Amarillo. Uh, these regions here uh, very limited today in terms of severe weather. Potential for wind and maybe a little bit of hail damage out there as well from any thunderstorms that pop up in that area aside, aside from that mainly uh, just general thunderstorm activity here in the light green uh, let's look at the numerical models out here high pressure across the eastern portion of the country now that's going to change here eventually we have got a little bit more rain coming into california um let's see here severe weather looks like it returns out there across the plains early next week more cooler weather across California but look down south here uh, these models are starting to trend and uh, each model run is getting more and more uh, closer right to this time period and it's picking up here on a major hurricane uh, towards about the 19th here of uh, November so literally you know just about a week out uh, we'll have a what looks like a Category 3 at least into the Gulf of Mexico. And this weather model is showing it slamming right into Florida. Now, it's been like this the past couple model runs. So we're going to have to watch this um, each day as we get closer here, right? Because 
If the models are picking up on something, you don't want to ignore it. Obviously, these weather models are uh, there for a reason to help the uh, forecasters, um, you know, put out early warnings here for any type of system. Let's see what we got here for the Atlantic. It is expected to, uh, yeah, it's even higher now uh, compared to last night. There's a 90% chance of development there in the next seven days. Next 48 hours, 60%. So this is no doubt going to be a tropical system. The thing is, uh, you know, where exactly is it going to be heading off to? Is it going to be um, moving into the Gulf or is it going to head off to the west or east? We'll have to watch and wait for the uh, forecast models here to come out. I don't know if uh, let's see here. That's not the one I want. So okay, here here it is right here. It looks like Invest ninety nine L. Um, over the next. Hey, look at this. Look at these forecast models here showing a category four potentially. Now this, again, it's a ways out, but the models are trending that this thing's going to be high in terms of a strong uh, tropical system. The path, these are spaghetti models, right? Sometimes they can look like, you know, maybe a, a three-year-old took a crayon and drew lines all over the map. But uh, we got to start watching this. This is starting to trend directly towards the Florida area as a strong hurricane. Uh, so we'll keep checking back on this, but it looks like right now it's gonna get caught up in the patterns and uh, head off to the uh, Florida area as potentially a strong uh, hurricane there. It's gonna be around the 19th or so, coming up here in about seven days, folks. So uh, kind of a big deal. We'll check back on it. Again, the weather models are showing uh, that tropical system there slamming into the Florida area about the 19th to 20th time period with a, a pretty solid hit there across the state of Florida. So we will check back on that each update. Uh, let's see what else we got. Anything major going on in terms of uh, asteroid approaches? Let's see, for the next five asteroid approaches out here, we got uh, a 54-foot asteroid, about a house size it looks like, uh, coming today safely at uh, 317,000 miles. Aside from that, everything else is uh, fairly distant out there. At least these are the ones that are being monitored here. There's, you know, hundreds upon hundreds and thousands of earthquakes out, or uh, asteroids out there. Some that may not have been uh, picked up or monitored. But uh, for the ones that are, it looks fairly safe there in terms of uh, close proximity to the Earth. All right, uh, I'm really surprised those little earthquakes aren't showing up here across California. Uh, the ones that uh, are showing up there across China Lake. Looks like there's some uh, some type of activity going on down there. Localized to that area. And that's the region. China Lake here is that area around uh, roughly about somewhere over here, I believe. It normally does a good job of picking up these earthquakes that are, are in this region. Nothing showing up from the USGS, although it looks like there's some something going on over there across that area. We'll continue to watch it and check back on it. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, starting to lose my voice again, but uh, a little bit at a time. I'm going to go drink some tea, I think, with a little bit of honey and some lemon. We'll see how that goes. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this uh, this evening, folks, unless something major happens. Have a good day.